1 Corinthians chapter 9, and I'll get there with you in just a minute. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and, and I want you to, to look at one verse. I will read one verse. Let's all stand for the reading of God's Word. Verse 1, verse, if you're there, chapter 9, verse 16. Look at verse 16, says this. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For of necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe, is me, woe unto me, if I preach not the gospel. Notice what he said, woe unto me. That word woe always deals with judgment or God being upset with us. That's why Jesus would say, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. The word woe is judgment. Woe unto me, he said, if I preach not the gospel. Let's pray. Father, as we come unto you in prayer, we thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord, for this day. Lord, we pray for the Sunday school, or the, the junior church teachers that are teaching now. Father, we pray for them. I pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, for those that are in the services this morning. Father, we just pray that you speak to our hearts. We thank you, Lord, and we ask, dear God, for those that are here that listen carefully. And Heavenly Father, Lord, may we take this message in our heart. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Let's go over to 2 Corinthians. If you would now jump over to 2 Corinthians and chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Paul said, Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. The gospel is something that has been given to every single Christian. I know how to get to heaven. i got to show somebody else how to get to heaven. That's the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. We need to teach others on the death, burial, and resurrection. But <clears throat> I'm going to say this to you as I start this morning. A lot of times the gospel is hid. We can't seem to get the gospel to other people. And when we think about that, we say, why is the gospel so hidden today? Well, let's look at these verses, and I think it will give us at least a hint, and then I'll give you a few other reasons why it's hid. Look at <clears throat> chapter, uh, where am I at here? Chapter, three, uh, chapter 4, verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded their minds, of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine, uh, and who is the image of God, should shine upon them. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to who? Those that are lost. Now those that are saved have already received the gospel. Amen. But if it is hid to others, well, how, is it the, how is it that the gospel is hid? He said, whom the God of this world, that's the devil, whom the God of this world has blinded their minds, lest the light of the glorious gospel would shine upon them. See, the, 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 the job of the devil is to keep you from getting saved. Amen. Because understand, if you don't get saved, you go where he's going. That's right. The Bible says that at the end, the devil's going to go to hell. That's right. And he knows that. And he knows that it, in the book of Revelation says he knows that he has but a short time. See, to us, a thousand years is a long time to God. It's but a day. Amen. It's nothing to him. So the devil knows because he knows what eternity is like. He knows that uh, soon this thing's going to end. Now, I'll give you a, a few thoughts as we studied the book of Daniel a, a few years back. We studied the prophecies. And, and, and if you look at today, we're seeing prophecy fulfilled up before our very eyes. I mean, I, I'm not going to get all into it, but we see prophecy being fulfilled. And people, if you guys were, some of you were a little stronger, I'd, I'd mention some of the things. But I'm just simply saying, if you look around, you're going to say, man, the Bible is right. Amen. God is right. Well, God's never been wrong. Right. That's right. He knows the beginning and he knows the end. That's right. And so the devil knows the end. Right. The devil knows what's coming. Mm -hmm. He knows one of these days it'll all be over. That's right. Now, if Jesus doesn't come back in my lifetime, I'm going to go meet him. Amen. Right. Regardless, I'm, I'm out of here someday. Amen. I think about when, when I got here, I was what, uh, 30, 34 years old when I first started pastoring here. Amen. I mean, now I'm 64 years old. <laughs> See, <where's> some... <laughs> 64. <laughs> These people like that that make it hard to preach. Anyway, Amen. <laughs> I, I'm old. Uh, one of these days, I'll be gone like everybody else. I mean, uh, that's just the way life is. Uh, life is, the Bible says that our life is but a vapor that appears for a little season and vanishes away. That's right. I think back when I was a kid uh, growing up, and I think about my parents, now they're gone. I think about my brothers and sisters who have passed away. Man, now they're gone. Just yesterday, I was, I was talking to my mom. Just yesterday, I was talking to my brother and sister. How time flew. Amen. 
Amen? Sister Van Horn was, what, 94 years old when she finally passed away. Think about it. When I first came here, she was in her 60s. She thought she was it. But we all get old. And we all die. Amen. So the Bible tells us that the devil wants to hide uh, the gospel from us. He didn't want you to get saved. That's right. He doesn't mind you being religious. He doesn't mind that, but don't get saved. Amen. He doesn't mind if you say, I believe the Bible. That's nice, but just don't get saved. That's right. Well, I pray every night. That's fine. Just don't get saved. Mm -hmm. He wants to make sure you're not saved. That's now, right. uh, let, let me hurry on this. So I want you to notice that, that, that Paul said, woe unto me if I don't preach the gospel of the Christ. <coughs> and the Bible says that who keeps the, who keeps the, the, the gospel hid? It is Satan. Now, first of all, I want you to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. And I, I want you to notice something. <clears throat> in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Uh, by the way, if you don't know where 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 is, it's in your Bible, all right? Just Amen. to help you out a little bit there. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. And I, I want you to see something here very important because the Apostle Paul is trying to get them to, to share the gospel and uh, to kind of encourage them in the Lord. But watch what it says in chapter 2 and then verse 18. Chapter 2, verse 18. He says, Wherefore I would have come unto you, even I, Paul, that's the Apostle Paul. Uh, he said, Once and again, but who hindered them? Satan. Satan. The Bible says, but Satan hindered us. See, if you don't think the devil's at work, you got something else coming. Amen. If you don't think the devil comes to church, you got something else coming. That's right. If you look at the book of Job, here they are worshiping God, and who shows up in the midst? Satan. Amen. If you look in the book, if you look in the in, the, in your in your Bible, you're going to find that Joshua, the high priest of the time, went to go worship God. And the Bible says, "But at his left hand, I saw Satan standing there." Satan comes to church. Amen. At the Lord's Supper, who do you think put in Judah's brain uh, 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 in his brain to dis, uh, to excuse me to betray the Lord? The Bible says it was the devil. Where, where was the devil? He was at the Lord's Supper. Amen. If you don't think the devil comes to church, you better, you better think twice because the devil always appears to try to get a sinner not to listen to the gospel of Christ. Amen. That's why it's important for us to do the best we can uh, to keep the service. That's why I get upset when people walk in and out. And, uh, why? You're keeping people from listening to the gospel. You know what people do when you walk in and out? Here's what they do. Really? But when you're talking up front, you're up here talking and, 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 and not listening to the gospel, guess what people back there are doing? They're going like, I wonder what they're talking about. But they're not listening to the preaching. Now I want you to notice something. The Apostle Paul says that the devil had hindered him. First of all, let me remind you that Satan hides the gospel from you. Amen. Right? Satan will hide the gospel if he can from you. And I'm going to give you some, some thoughts later on on how he does it. But first of all, he does hide it. Remember, you could be at church, and what are you thinking about? I'm going to go to the lake later. That's what you're thinking about. You're thinking about the Super Bowl, or you're thinking about a, a football game that's going on, or you're thinking about something you wanted to go do right after church, but you're not thinking about what the preacher's saying. And so sometimes you bring your, your lost loved one, and they're doing the same thing. Why? Because there's no power of the Holy Spirit in the church. There ought to be some power in the church. Amen? Amen. And so realize uh, the devil's going to do everything he can from keeping you uh, or, or to keep you from listening to the gospel of Christ. You see, the most important thing there is in this world is the gospel of Christ. Amen. It is not how much money you make in this earth. That's right. Because you're not taking it with you when you die, and sometimes you die young. Right. Amen. Some people barely get up there, and they start making the kind of money they wish they had, and before you know it, they're gone. Yeah. You're not going to take that money with you. But if the devil can keep you from, from uh, uh, making, if the devil keep you making money and from hearing the gospel, you're not going to get saved. Why? Because the devil will do everything he can to keep you from listening and hearing and obeying the gospel. Amen. See, the gospel is simple. It is simply that Jesus Christ came into this world, born of a virgin. Amen. Amen. He was born of a virgin. Now, yes, Mary had more children. Yes, Jesus had brothers and sisters. Uh, uh, she didn't die a virgin. She had more children. But Jesus was born of her when she was a virgin girl. Not only was she born of her not, uh, uh, from a virgin mom, but he lived a sinless life. Jesus Amen. never Amen. sinned. Amen. You, look, you look at the, the scriptures and they'll teach you that Jesus is the only man that never sinned. Right. Now, he didn't need a Savior. Did you know that? 
Jesus did not need a Savior. And here's what the Bible says concerning his mother. His mother said, Blessed be the Lord, my Savior. He, she needed a Savior. He Amen. did not. Amen. And she was a sinner like the rest of us. Except she was a young girl who believed in God and loved the Lord and lived a clean, pure life. Now, let me give you the thought. So Jesus lives a, a, a life without any sin. Then I want you to consider the next thing. Jesus gives his life for us. Right? Yeah. Right. The Bible says it was planned before the foundation of the world. Amen. God had already said Jesus would die for us. That's right. Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Nothing else can take away your sin except the blood of the Lamb, Amen. Jesus Christ. And so Jesus went to a cross. And there he suffered at that cross until the day, excuse me, until the finally the pain was so intense that he looks up and he said, Lord Jesus, into thy uh, excuse me, Father, into thine hands I commend my spirit. Nobody took his life, he gave for it for Amen. us. Amen. Right. He gave his life for us. Right. Now, when you think about the Lord Jesus Christ uh, go, going to the cross, we see the sinless Son of God going to a cross, paying for our sin. That's the gospel. Amen. He shed his blood so that you and I can receive forgiveness, uh, can receive forgiveness of sin. Amen. So, once he died, on the third day, he raises up from the dead. And by the way, he prophesied that before he even was crucified. Amen. He, did, he, he said, uh, destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it up. And he did. So, Jesus Christ rises up from the dead. And he says to them, uh, don't hold me back right now. He said, I've got to go see my father. And he goes to see the Father. You know what he did? The Bible says in Hebrews that he took the blood up to the holiest of holies, heaven, and made an atonement for us. Amen. That means when you and I now repent, receive Christ as our Savior, uh, we, are, we are saved because of Jesus Christ right. and the blood that he shed. His blood, the Bible says, washes away our sin. The devil doesn't want you to believe that. Amen. The devil wants you to believe that you're pretty good. Right. The devil wants you to believe that you're pretty religious. The devil wants you to believe that you're just a, such a great person, God would never send you to hell. Right. Well, I mean, the truth is that there's a lot of people that we love or we thought were great, but didn't make heaven. That's right. They didn't make heaven. Now, I, I use an illustration here. Hope I don't get anybody mad, but I guess most of you probably wouldn't even uh, know what I'm talking about. But you see, the, 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 the devil will say to you, You've got plenty of time. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen? Now, to some people, he'll say, there's no God, and he catches you that way. Mm -hmm. To some people, he'll say, well, don't worry about it. That's not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. Amen? Or to some people, he'll say, well, you can believe what the, what the preacher's saying, but don't do it. Right. Mm -hmm. you gotta, you, you'll do it later. As you get older, you'll do it later. Amen? Amen. Years ago, we had a young girl used to come here. I won't go through names or anything because we are on, on video. But I can remember her getting killed. And I remember thinking to myself, here's a young girl who could have really lived for the Lord. Right. That's right. And here she got killed in a car accident because she started hanging around with some gang member. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget that. But I remember when they told me, I said, you got to be kidding me. They said, no. Man, it's sad. Now, I went to the funeral. I didn't get to see the open casket. But Paul did. Paul said, man, it, it, was, it was bad, Dad. This didn't even look good at all. It was terrible. But what happened, the devil got to her, didn't he? Amen. All day, you can get saved. You can, get, you, you can give your life to the Lord, but do it later. But then to some of us, he'll just say to us, not only uh, do it later, but some, like I said, uh, there's no God. To some, you can, you can enjoy life for a while. And I mean, you can go on and on and on. The truth is, the devil has a good way of blinding us from listening to the gospel of Christ. Right. Now, let me give you another one. Not only is it the devil that's going to keep you from, from uh, it's going to blind you so that you won't receive the gospel. I want you to go to John, the gospel of John chapter 1. The gospel of John chapter 1. All right, watch carefully as we go to the Gospel of John, and I want you to see something here. <clears throat> now, if you're there, say amen. 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 Now, wait for me, because I ain't. All right, John chapter 1, and look at verse 5. Verse 5 says this, And the light that shined in darkness, excuse me, I'm sorry, I read this wrong. And the light that shined in, in darkness, he says, And the darkness comprehended it not. Now, watch what he said. The light shined in darkness. But the darkness comprehended it not. Now remember, when the Bible speaks of darkness, he's talking about sin. Amen. Amen. When he speaks of darkness, he's talking about sin. There is light, that's the Lord, and then there's darkness. That's right. Now I want you to notice the next verse I want to give you. Go over, if you would, to the third chapter of John. 
And look at verse, third chapter, look at verse 19. Verse 19 says, This is the condemnation, or that is why men go to hell, they're condemned. This is the condemnation that light, excuse me, the light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Notice why men go to hell. Men don't go to hell because God didn't try to save you. Amen. Men go to hell because they didn't listen or they didn't care about the light. Why didn't they care? Because their deeds are evil. Right. In other words, men choose sin instead of God. Right. I'm gonna live for I'm gonna live for the devil. I don't want to live for God. I like my sin. I like going out and getting loaded. I like going out and, and partying. I like going out and doing this. I don't mind committing adultery. I don't mind that. And because of that, the devil keeps you from listening and seeing the light the light of the gospel. Amen. Amen. Men love darkness rather than light. And by the way, it does happen, people. The devil is not here like you, you, you think of, well, I'll outsmart the devil. No, you won't. He's been here too long. Amen. A lot longer than you have. You're not going to outsmart the devil. Amen. The devil knows exactly how, how to get to you because he's been getting to mankind for a long time. Amen. And so the devil's going to say to you, the devil's going to say to you, not right now, man, you're enjoying sin. One preacher said, I was witnessing to this very young lady in her early 20s. He said, I got the witness sent to her. And I said, listen, you need to give your life to Christ. She said, yeah, you know what, Pastor, I'm going to. I'm going to give my life to Jesus, but not until I sow my oats and go out there and just enjoy life and have a great time. And once I'm tired of sin, I'll come and give my life to Christ. Mm -hmm. He said, I thought to myself, man, how terrible. How terrible that she would say that to me. He said, the very next day on Monday morning, he said, I looked at the a newspaper and there was a, 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 a young, a, there'd been a big accident, car accident and a young lady was hanging out the door. That's before they, uh, they, they, they would, uh, before they put the sensor that where you couldn't show the bodies and stuff. He said, there's a young lady with her, 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 her half her body hanging out the door. He said, and I read them a little bit and I said, man, she sounds so familiar. When my phone rang, one of her relatives. I said, you remember so-and-so? She came to church yesterday. He said, oh, yeah, I was talking to her. He goes, well, she's the one in the newspaper. She's the one in the newspaper. See, she thought, I'm going to live forever. She thought, sin ain't going to get to me. I'll live forever. And while she's out drinking and partying, got herself killed. I I'm saying to you, that does happen. Brother, Brother Hames had a situation in his church, the same thing. Yeah. The lady, the young girl says, I hate you. Tell the preacher that. I don't like you. Found herself killed against a cotton, uh, uh, one of those cotton trailers in the Bakersfield area. Busted her head against that thing, and she was really young. And the Bible says that all things work together for good to those that love God. Amen. Somebody came to him and said, well, you know, I know that poor girl got herself killed, but you know, the, the Bible says, Brother Hayes, all things work together for good. For those that love God, he said, yeah, no, he said, all things work together for good. He said, yeah, finish the verse. To those that love God, Amen. not to the sinners. Right. It can't be good that a person dies and goes to hell. That can't be good. Amen. Amen. And so the truth is that uh, sometimes sin, and by the way, sin does hold us captive, don't it? Amen. It can, it can. It'll hold you. It'll hold anybody. It'll hold us captive. Let's go to Ephesians quickly. Ephesians chapter uh, 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, sin does hold us captive. Sin does have a, a power over us. I'll try not to keep you long this morning, I hope. All right, I'll be like Elizabeth Taylor said to her, what, sixth, seventh husband? Don't worry, I won't keep you long. <laughs> oh, for those of you that don't know who Elizabeth Taylor is, J-Lo said to her, sixth husband, don't worry, I won't keep you long. Amen. <laughs> All right, now watch what, uh, watch what it says here in chapter 4. In chapter 4, it makes this statement. Verse 7, we're going to start with verse 17 of chapter 4. And it says this. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as, excuse me, as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Gentiles are sinners, is what he means by that. Having their understanding darkened. Notice that it's sin. Darkened. Being alienated from, God, from the life of God through ignorance that is in, that is in them because of the blindness of of their heart, who being past, oh, this is a strong word, who being past feeling, they don't even feel convicted anymore. Having themselves, uh, having themselves over, uh, excuse me, giving themselves over to lasciviousness and all uncleanliness 
and greediness. Now, uh, notice what he's saying about concerning the unsaved. Now, let's go to chapter 5, chapter 5 and verse 8. Now, he talks to us for a little bit. In chapter 5, look at verse 8. He says, for you were sometimes darkness. That's us. He said, you were sometimes, but now you are light. Walk as children of light. Amen. A Christian is to walk differently. Amen. Amen. Now, why does he walk differently? Because now he sees that the darkness is of the devil and light is of God. Amen. Now, he says in verse, say, say, same chapter there where you're at, I want you to look at verse 11. He says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Now, why does a man change his life? Why does a man, now remember, when you first get saved, and you've heard me use this illustration before, when you first get saved, you don't know too much, but you, you're trying to grow, you're trying to learn, and so you don't realize that the Bible teaches uh, you shouldn't say certain things. You don't realize that, and so because of that, you, you just do it, but then all of a sudden, you get convicted. Amen? Now, you remember when you first got saved? I can tell you, when I first got saved, I didn't know that profanity was wrong, but... Uh, in my spirit, I just didn't do it. I just thought, no, I better not cuss no more. I don't think God would be too happy. But I never read it in the Bible. The Holy Spirit was showing me that. Amen. And I'll never forget, I was a welder for a company there in Delano. I was a welder, and I was welding for this company. I was welding some molds that used to make those uh, styrofoam boxes. And so I finished welding one, and I turned around to wrap up my stuff. And what I should have done is put it down first, but I didn't. I turned around, and I started wrapping up my... my, my uh, my cords and stuff for my welder, and I'm wrapping everything up. When that thing fell, and it caught the heel of my foot. By the way, it became dark for quite a while. <laughs> it got me good. When he did, understand, I had just gotten saved. Been saved for about two months. I had just gotten saved when that thing fell, and oh, man, I let out a cuss word. I let out a cuss word. I was just a young Christian. Do you know that it hurt me more in here that I had cuss than the pain that I was feeling down there? Here I am, where, and I started telling everybody, man, I'm so sorry, God. I didn't mean to cuss. I, and they were drinking buddies. They knew that I cussed and stuff, but they were saying, hey, we understand. Man, that thing hit you. I said, no, no, you don't understand. I shouldn't have cussed. I'm sorry that I cussed. Why did I do that? Because I'm no longer living in darkness. Now I'm in the light of God. Amen. Amen. And all of a sudden you realize that that was wrong. I couldn't, I couldn't do that anymore. As I said this morning during Sunday school, I couldn't do that anymore. I couldn't allow things in my home anymore. I, well, what was happening? You see, before I loved darkness. And they would witness to me. And I'd get mad when you witness to me. Mm -hmm. I told you the story, but I'm going to tell it to you again. It's, it's true. There's a, a, a black guy who used to witness to me. Uh, and I, by the way, he was a nice guy. He's just, I was into it. And I told him, I said, I, I don't want to hear that junk anymore, man. Don't be telling me that anymore. He come over to my house and, to be honest with you, I beat him up. Don't, don't ever come to my house talking to me about God and all that anymore. But every time he would leave, he'd look at the Bible and go, the Bible says, no drunk shall inherit the kingdom of God. That's you. Don't you just hate it when they got their brain like Amen. that? Amen. He'd walk away, and, and God would say to me, that is you. That's what's going to happen to you. When I got saved, he was the first one I looked up. He said, I knew it. I knew God was looking for you. I knew he was doing what happened. God was dealing with my heart. Amen. I was in darkness, and I love darkness, but now what did I like? I like now, I like the light of the gospel of Christ. Amen. All of a sudden, I was saved. All of a sudden, I didn't uh, care for all that. I can remember one of my best friends, name was Manuel. Manuel come over, and he said like this. You became a Christian? I said, yeah, he, he, he tells me. I'm going to be honest with you. He says, you're going to lose all your friends. I said, well, if the only reason they're my friends is because I party, they're not really my friends. Amen. Amen. I mean, I'm sorry, but I, I didn't care if I lost everybody. I got saved. Something had happened inside of me. Amen. And when you get saved, things change. Amen. Something Amen. begins to change inside of you. Something begins to to, to move inside of you. Now let me go to the next one uh, real quickly. Not only does sin blind you to the gospel of Christ, Satan blinds you to the gospel of Christ, but then I'm going to give you, a, now I'm going to kind of get on us a little bit as saints. Go to Matthew chapter, uh, where I want to go, Matthew chapter 9, if you would. Matthew chapter 9. The saints sometimes are the ones that are, that are hindering the gospel of Christ. They hide the gospel of Christ. We Christians ought to be good soul winners, amen? We ought to share the gospel with people. We ought to let them know that there's a God in heaven. Why? Because, uh, don't turn there, but in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10, the Bible says, knowing the terror of the Lord, 
Listen to me very carefully. When we stand before God, it's going to be terrifying. Amen. Amen. Not, a, 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 an unlost person is going to stand before God. He's not going to stand there and say, all right, what do you want, God? That's not the way it's going to be. Amen. We're talking about a holy God yeah. whose holiness, if I saw him right now in this flesh, the Bible says well, his holiness would kill me. When, Paul, when John saw just the glorified Christ, not even the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit together, but just the glorified Christ, he says that when I saw him, I felt that his feet is dead. You're not going to stand there and be a smart aleck with God. Amen. And that ain't going to work. Amen? Amen. Now watch carefully here. He says this. In Matthew chapter 9 and verse 36, he says this. It says, and when I saw the, excuse me, and, but when he saw, and he's talking about Jesus, when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, that's the, the Christians, says to his disciples, the harvest is truly plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray therefore the Lord of harvest that he'll send forth uh, labors into the harvest. So realize the problem is not the harvest. The problem is the labors. Amen. Christians Amen. that will not witness, Christians that will not share the gospel, or uh, the gospel with someone else. The apostle Paul said in Acts chapter twenty, and verse 20, 26 and twenty-seven, he said, "I share." Uh, he said, "I went, I went sharing the gospel with him." He said, "Not only publicly, but from house to house, I went everywhere, knocking on doors, talking to people." And by the way, then he says like this: He said, "And you know, but that by the space of three years, I ceased not." He said to warn everyone with tears. Amen. Paul said, I'm trying to tell you, someday you're going to die. Someday you're going to stand before God. Someday you're going to have to give an account for your life. You see, Hebrews 9.27 says, as it is appointed unto a man once to die. Amen. And after this, the judgment. That's right. Now, you're, you're, your mom's not going to be with you at the judgment. Your dad's not going to be with you. This church won't be with me when I get judged. It's going to be me and God. Amen. Amen. And did I do things right or not? Now, I don't know the secrets of your heart, but the Bible says that the Spirit of God knows the secrets of our hearts. That's right. That's, right. that's scary. Amen? I don't care who you are, that's scary. But let's assume, and, I, and you heard me say this, but I want to say that again. Jesus stood right here right now. And he called your name, whoever you are right now. He said, come here. And he said, oh, what do you want, Lord? Come here. He came up, he said, I'm about to reveal to everyone the secrets of your heart. That'd be scary, huh? Amen. Amen. I'd be saying, no, get Sister D. <laughs> I'd be scared, wouldn't you? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Even though I'm a pastor, even though I try to live right, even though I try to do right, I'm simply saying, I'd be afraid. Why? Because we're going to stand, the Bible says the, uh, that when we stand before the Lord, that it is a, it is a fearful thing to stand, to stand in the presence of a fearful God. Amen. It's going to be fearful. That's why Paul said, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men to get saved. All right, so understand, the saints ought to be doing the work of God. See, we, we're afraid to share the gospel. We're afraid to let people know we're Christians. And you should. You shouldn't be afraid. You should witness it for Christ. I mean, especially here in America, nobody's going to kill you because you're a Christian. Nobody's going to take you out and burn you at the stake because you're a Christian. I mean, nothing's going to happen. We, I've been door knocking here since I moved here. And of course, in Bakersfield, I've never had anybody. I had someone throw away a track, but that's about it. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the most I've suffered. A guy almost beat me up one time because of Robert, but that's another story. I'll, I'll give you that story some other time. I'm just saying it's not that bad to go out and witness. Somebody might slam the door. So what? Go to the next door. Amen. I mean, all I'm saying is we, we as God's people sometimes hide the gospel. Think about it. We hide the gospel. Here's somebody that needs the, the gospel and we don't share it with them. Here's somebody that got conviction and says, that person right there needs to be told. But you won't tell them. Why? Because you're afraid. That's right. Or you want them to like you. We ought to want the Lord to like us. Amen. 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 Now, Amen. I guarantee you, people will like you if, you if you share the gospel. Sometimes we, we sometimes because we're, we're, our testimony is bad, nobody listens to us. That's right. Listen to me. If your testimony stinks, it's hard for you to witness to people. Amen. Right. Uh, we, that's how we hide the gospel, a bad testimony. We hide it sometimes because we're afraid. Or sometimes we got pleasure in our mind. Oh, I got to go here. I got to go there. Or I got things to do. I'm going to go to the baseball game. But you never share the gospel with anyone. Amen? Now, let me give you another one real quickly. A snob. 
Sometimes we're snobs. A Christian shouldn't be known as a snob at work or anywhere. Right? Amen. People that I realize that's a Christian person. Now, I'm not saying you go around doing whatever they say. No, but you shouldn't be a snob. I used to work with a lady who was uh, uh, from an apostolic church, and she was a snob in the hat. Nobody listened to her. Nobody wanted to be around her because she was a snob. And I can remember when, when uh, she was talking, uh, I had first got saved, and once she found out that I believed the gospel, she came over there and started talking to me. And I said, wait a minute. I said, you never shared the gospel with me till after I'm saved, but you were mean to me, but you never shared the gospel with me. Well, she said, I said, no, listen to me. I said, I don't believe a Christian ought to be snobs. Right. Amen. I mean, if you are, how, how can people listen to you if you're mean to people? Amen. Uh, my, my, one of my sisters had a, she's very religious, let's put it that way. She's not a Christian, but she's very religious. And she was sitting out eating one time, and she's probably about, what, I'm going to say 79 or so at the time. And she's sitting there eating, and this young man, about 23, 24 years old, he sees her there, so he sits down and starts talking to her. So how do you like this job? How long have you been here talk, trying to make conversation with her? Because you know what? Now remember, she's religious. You know what? She says, when I'm eating, I don't like anybody coming here sitting down and bothering me. Can't you go sit somewhere else? When she told me about that, I said, and hey, you're going to tell him someday how much you love God? Amen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not going to believe you. That's we can't right. be snobs. Amen. And be good Christian. Amen. That hides the gospel. Right. Amen. Right. One day a kid was riding his bike, and you ever argued with your wife? All of you goes like, I better not say nothing. She said next to me, she'll hit me. Don't worry about it. They don't hit that hard. But anyways, uh, I, I'm, I'm, me and Mike had been arguing. Uh, usually it's her fault, but we had, were arguing that day. And I'm, I'm, I, I'm driving my van out of this store. We had been shopping. And, and she wouldn't buy me the kind of food I wanted, so I was mad. And so we're going, no, I'm kidding. We're going, and, and, and this little kid, as we're arguing, the little kid, I, I say kid, he's a teenager. He, I'm going on this, uh, 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 he's going on this bike, you know how they like to do that, and pop wheelies and all, right in front of us. And, and I'm in a hurry now, because I'm mad, I gotta get home, throw out of the van so I can go take off. And so I'm trying to get home, and next thing you know, he goes real slow. <laughs> I look at him, and I, I honked, and he looked like, I don't know what he said, but he said something. I said, what? What did you say? Come here. Come here. I started getting all mad at him. And the kid just took off. And Veronica says to me, why don't you get out of the car and witness to him now? Because <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed because uh, even, though I, I, you know, even though we had been arguing, there was no reason for me to treat that kid that way. I was embarrassed. Sometimes being snobs is a terrible thing. Amen. Amen. Nobody, nobody wants to listen to us not tell you about the gospel. I'll finish before I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up going over. I won't go over. I'll just finish at twelve o'clock for sure. All right. Now I want you to remember seducers. Now we're doing, let's go if you would. Not only the saints keep you, but seducers. I want you to go to Second Timothy quickly. All right. We're gonna be finished in a few minutes, so you guys should be saying Amen and praise the Lord because the, the sermon's <laughs> almost over. All right. Now I want you to notice here in Second Timothy when you get there. Uh, and I'll, I'll read you just a, a couple of uh, chapters here, a couple of chapters here, one, one somewhere else, and I'll try to close it up. Remember that Jesus said, beware of false prophets. So when I say seducers, I'm talking to those people that seduce you through the scriptures. Now, I want to give you something here. Look at what it says if you're in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, and look at verse 13. He says, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Deceiving and being deceived. Now look at chapter 4, quickly. <clears throat> chapter 4. And then it says this. I charge you therefore. Now this is young Timothy. He's a young preacher. And Paul is giving him instructions as to what to do with the word of God that he's been given. He says to him, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant. In season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Now that word sound doctrine means healthy doctrine or spiritually healthy doctrine. They will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fable. Now remember the truth is always 
the word of God. All right. So I'm going to give you a thought here, and then I'm going to have you, uh, and then I'll have you go somewhere else real quickly. So I want you to consider what he's saying to them. He's telling them that there's going to come a time when people are not going to listen to the word of God. Amen. I remember, remember the Bible says there'll be a famine, but not of bread nor of water, but a famine of the word of God. Nobody will be preaching what they ought to be preaching. See, a lot of preachers today, they're not going to preach against sin because they need the crowd. And, and to be honest with you, they'll make millions on you because they control the finances of the church. No preacher should control, control the finances of the church. The church ought to vote on how much he makes and what they want to pay him. He should not control that. Right. They should not be like the preacher. You're supposed to be forming out of history. My own son said, that's right. Anyway, I'm just kidding. Could you imagine, though, like the old preacher that used to get the, the offering and throw it up and say, no, Lord, I'm not throwing this offering up. Whatever stays up there is yours. Whatever falls on the ground is mine. Well, that's the way a lot of preachers do it, don't they? They come out here and they take everything they can. And it really, they'll be driving the Cadillac, not you, I guarantee you that. So uh, now, now, real quick, all right. Ah, too bad. You'll just have to hang in there with me. Go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Now, this is a good one here, so you want to go to that one, all right? Now, understand, they're good at it. They're never going to uh, reprove you. They're never going to uh, uh, tell you you're, this is sin, you're wrong. They won't tell you that. Why? Because they love the money that comes with it, all right? Now, 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 13, but uh, no, chapter 11, I'm sorry, chapter 11. All right, if you're there, we're going to start reading in just a minute. Now understand, look at, verse, uh, look at verse 13 of 11th chapter, 2 Corinthians, verse 13. For such are false apostles. By the way, there are no apostles today. If you go to a church where they say, this is apostles, so there's no apostles today. An apostle was an eyewitness of Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, and he saw Jesus after he was resurrected. That's an apostle. If you go to a church where the guy says, this is apostle so-and-so, he's lying to you. There's no apostles today. There's only disciples and there's pastors and so on. Now watch what he goes on to say. He says, for such, he goes on, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And we got a lot of that going on today. And no marvel, or don't look with amazement, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into the ministers of righteousness, whose end is according to their works. He said, "Don't be shocked, because they're good at it. They talk good. They know how to use the scriptures or misuse the scriptures to get money out of you, to live high off the hog off of you, and so on. They know how to do that. They're good at it." Amen? And they're very likable. I mean, you know, they, they know how to say, ain't that a cute little baby right there? I mean, they know how to do all that. Well, sister, so is you. That dress looks so good on you. They're good about all that. Amen? Amen. They know how to get you. They know how, to, how you're going to say, oh, I just love that preacher. Boy, we ought to just give more money to him. No, you give money to the Lord. Amen. And the church will take care of the pastor, but all of you together. Amen? And now, uh, don't misunderstand me. I believe you ought to take care of the Lord. And, excuse me, take care of the pastor. And I believe since I'm your pastor, you ought to take care of me real good. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. The way all of you do, huh? I'm just kidding you. But no, let, let, me, let me hurry up. So here's what they're not going to preach on, separation. Amen. They're not going to preach on separation. What does that mean? Get separated from the world. Yeah. I got no business at the bars. I got no business in some movie theater watching movies that are using profanity in the Lord's name in vain and F words and all. I got no business there. I'm a Christian. Amen. I mean, I learned that without even hearing the preaching. The Holy Spirit taught me that pretty quick. I mean, can I say to you, they're not going to teach us. They're not going to teach on sanctification it means that you on your own start living differently. Yeah. That you start saying, I'm not going to do that. I just don't think that's right. No, I won't do that. I don't think that's right. And they're not going to teach you the scriptures. Amen. The scriptures. See, the, the scriptures teach me that I, I ought not to do certain things. It teaches you you should do certain things. Amen? Amen? But it's hard for me to, for you to come to this church and the pastor preaches on ladies wear dresses. It's kind of hard. You know why? Because the preacher down the street lets you dress however you want to. That's right. Amen? Amen. Uh, I'm going to close with this last illustration. But I could remember years ago, I thought, well, if we're going to sing in the choir, we've got to dress properly. 
right? That's right. Lady come up and she uh, had a dress uh, that was low cut. I'll just say it that way. Very low cut. And you can see it was low cut because she was a very pretty lady. And she said to me, uh, can I sing in the choir? I said, she'd been coming to church for a while, not here, but when I was pastor in Bakersfield. She said, can I sing in the choir? I said, absolutely. I said, but you're going to have to change that dress. You're going to have to learn how to dress properly when you come to church. Okay, that's not a problem. That's not a problem. I said, okay. She come to church. The day we were going to sing, she comes to church. Had a big crowd that day. I remember we were, I think, uh, uh, almost 200 and something that day in our services. And here she comes to get up. Uh, to get up now. Back then, I was more hard spoken than I am now. Now I try to speak to you nicely. I take you on the side and talk to you. Back then, I didn't. And I probably need to get back to that. But anyways, as she's coming up, I'm sitting up here. She's coming up. The choir's getting ready to sing, and she starts to come up with a dress just like that, just like I told her, don't not wear. So I got up. I went. I went like this. I went. Excuse me. I said, go back and sit down. She goes. Well, I was going to say, I think you're not singing the choir with that. I told you you weren't wearing that. And you're not wearing that in the middle of everybody. So go sit down. She went, you're a man, I mean pastor. I said, yeah, and you lied to me. Amen? There's not only one way, people. This is in both ways. If you give your word, you ought to keep it. Amen? Right. You right. give your word to someone, keep your word. You said you wouldn't Amen. do it, don't do it. And I mean, she thought I was a nut. But I said, no, you know that nobody in the church got mad at me? Nobody in the church said, oh, pastor, so unfair. No, they all said, Hey, we all know the rules. And we ought to keep the rules. Amen. Amen. I was going to give you an illustration, but I didn't keep my word. I said I'd let you, I'd close, so I'm going to close. As much as I hate to close without this last illustration. But if you'll come back tonight saying that channel, you'll get to hear it. Amen. Let's all stand real quick as we get ready to dismiss. Father.